as I mentioned in the last video, I had some uh, piston rings stashed away. These are new standard rings for the 2 litre. Had them many years, and first time I've actually really looked at them. And when I say looked at them, I decided to measure the uh, the ring gap of a, a, a used ring. And that's not exactly tight, and that's um, one millimetre, which is way too big. I thought, well, we know this bolt. Sorry, just tripping over things. We know this bar wear. Uh, we knew it was never going to be perfect. And those standard rings are not standard. As you can see there, folks, they actually overlap. Which causes a bit of an issue because the old rings, I have to pull that one out. I don't know if you can see, but right on the edge is a raised up lip. Well, that lip shouldn't be there. It should be the same thickness right across, which means these things will just flutter away in the ring grooves and cause oil pumping and things and make the engine breathe badly, which we don't want. I also, to keep the cost down, don't really want to have to go out and buy a set of piston rings. Which makes me wonder, do I trim these down? Do I file these down to fit, get the correct gap? It would actually, uh, how should we say, take up the slack in the cylinder bars. I suppose it's worth the experiment. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Should I, shouldn't I? Nothing to lose. So... What's next? I hear you ask. Going to have to be these, uh, the pistons and the rings. So, as we knew, the bars have got wear to them. We dropped in a, a standard piston ring into the bar. And... Oh, wrong one. That's a millimetre feeler gauge. And it's slack. So, it's quite a large gap there. I found some uh, new old stock piston rings that I'd stashed away. They were bagged up as standard, however, you can see they overlap. So, the dilemma was standard rings, or do I file fit these oversize? And I'd already decided, but it seems uh, a lot of you agree on just how should we say file fit the rings. So, we now have. In there, that's one of the oversized rings with a a nice sixteenth out gap. That seems a good starting point. So, just the rest of them to do. Well, with the brutal method of the um, the angle grinder, just to remove the initial amount, we're uh, obviously quite a way off at the moment. But from this point. We just use a file and keep fettling it away until it fits in and gives the right clearance. So I've just filed a little bit more, just with the hand file there. I'll drop that into the bar. What I'm using is an old piston with the top ring removed, but the second one in place, which just allows it to uh, push the ring down evenly. And then we get the oversized feeler gauges. Right, this is a 12 thou, and that oh, that's just just going into it. I'm not far off the 16 thou that I'm aiming for. So I shall give it a little bit more filing, and we shall try again. Right, a little bit more whittled off. And we are only taking a tiny amount off a time. But obviously we can't add it back on. Always remember that. Now, this is a budget build and we're just fine-tuning the piston rings to get the correct gaps. 
Um, but if this was a fresh build with rebarred cylinders, new pistons and rings, you still need to check these ring gaps. So our 16th out is just entering. The 12th out goes through, so we are very, very close now. So I shall give it just a couple of swipes with a file and we shall be about there. So once again, just shaved a little bit off. I'm going to push down with the piston. In yeah. twelve thou feels slack. That's a very tight sixteen. I'm literally just gonna give it two more brushes off very, very lightly, and that should be uh, perfect. Alright, let's uh Try that again. One reason I didn't like the slack ring gaps is if we're going to use this 1600 head, it's going to be quite a high compression ratio. So we've got big gaps, which can get a lot of blow by and an engine that breathes badly. Yeah. That's 16. That's 16. And that one's 16. Just one more to go. So what we do basically is I'll put the ring in there and get it so it's in its overlap state so I can show you. And then I can show you what I'm doing literally to, uh, how should we say, take the right amount off. So I've literally just put the ring quite high up in the cylinder. You can see the overlap there. And what I'm going to do is literally just put a scribe mark across. Then highlight it with a black marker pen. And then we can go butcher it on the um, grinding wheel. So, I don't know if you can see that, the, I've got a little black mark, it's not focusing is it? Well yeah, there's a little black mark on one side of the ring there, that's how much needs to be removed so it will actually fit in the bar. So, let's go and uh, remove some metal. Right. Yeah, that's a, a tickle off there. Let's go see if it fits in the uh, in the cylinder bar. So I've just dropped in the second compression rings. All there with a little bit of overlap. I can now mark those up, trim them with the uh, grinding wheel on the uh, on the little four-inch grinder, and then file fit again. Well, once done, at least we know we've got the correct ring gaps.
Here's how accurate you can be. Basically, I'm using the 12th thou and the 16th thou. And when the 12th thou goes in, I'm definitely on the file because we're only a few thou away. And I've just literally done that one on the grinder. And that's a, it's not focusing. That's a really nice 12th thou fit, as was that one and that one. And there's no accurate you can be just on a crappy bench grinder. Right, I'll file that one to fit. And then that just leaves the uh, oil rings. Right, so we're on to the um, oil control rings. These are uh, a three-parter. You've got the uh, this bit which sits literally between two of these, which are rather thin. And obviously it overlaps. But also these expander parts will be a little bit bigger. So I'm thinking of, do I use the old expanders with the new rings trimmed to suit, or do I use the old rings completely? I suppose we could chuck an old one in the bar and just see what sort of gap it has, and we'll make a decision from there. So, looking up the uh, oil control ring gaps, it shows a, a maximum of 55 thou, which is over a millimeter. Um, that's a millimeter. You would almost drop a spanner down that. So then we'll go with, uh, we'll file fit these, and then we might actually try them with these old expanders, because those are a bit big. Hmm. We'll do some fettling. Well, I've just final fitted two of the control rings um, to a probably 17 thou compared to what we had in there, which is a, probably about one and a half millimeters. Also, I use the old expander in there and it seems to fit nicely. Those ones are too big. So I shall continue with the uh, rest of the oil rings. And then... Uh, We'll have a look at some pistons. Well, that's the oil control rings, all gapped. I've done those to between 16 and 18 thou, the, the maximum size being 55 thou. So that should be, uh, should be close enough for our needs. So next, let's dig out some pistons and rods. Now, I am going to use new big end shells on this, mainly because I found a set on eBay for £27.50, I think it was. Daft not to. So, pistons. These are the uh, original four pistons I picked out. They kind of look the cleanest. Um, but they're not perfect, and they were not out of the block I'm using. I believe these were actually out of a, an old RS2000 engine. And it looked to have had a recent freshen up. So I thought, well, let's just see what the skirt measurements are like. And that one feels quite good. That one feels quite good. A bit of drag on it. And I got to this one. The slack in that one. And that one, it's not quite as snug. And when we look at the crowns, that one's not too bad. That one's not too bad. Not brilliant, but it's not too bad. But then we'll get to the one that was the slackest. And yeah, that one's not so happy, as you can see. That's detonation. This is on that one. Now, I'd say these are out of the same engine, it makes you wonder why those two aren't showing signs. 
So basically that one and that one are no good. So I shall uh, remove those from them two rods because obviously the rods are matched. Uh, so I thought, well, let's see what other pistons we have. This one was just uh, floating about. And it's not too bad across the skirt. Feels very similar to them two. The, uh, the crown has a little bit of mark in there but this was partially corroded on the top and I think it's more of corrosion opposed to detonation. So I moved along a bit further and I'm not sure if uh, these did actually come out of the block. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, this one It's not perfect across there, but it's it's close. Thought, ooh, I could maybe use that one. But then I was looking at the ring gaps, and just let me find it for you. There, if you can see that. It's opened up. And the piston ring that was in there, as you can see, is a little bit deformed. So that one's no good. We've got a couple more here. That one has suffered with corrosion on the top, leaving a lot of uh, pits and craters. Which is a shame, because it's not too bad across the skirt there. That leaves that one. That feels slack across there, it's not perfect. And yeah. So that one's probably in suffering detonation as well. So, what have we learned from this? Unleaded fuel is no good in a Pinto engine, the light, the lead, and. Uh, when I was running Pintos in the leaded fuel days, I didn't really see this problem. This is more from uh, badly running engines with incorrect ignition timing, etc. And obviously no lead in the fuel. So I think next I'm going to have to go rummage in the scrap pile and see what other options we have. Because at the moment, we're a piston short. We have piston rings, just not enough pistons. So things aren't looking that good for pistons. Those two are okay, as is that one. Those two are scrap, but I do need to remove the connecting rods because we'll need those for the, at least for that one. Uh, this was the next favorite. Didn't look too bad. Measures quite good across the skirt, but that's the one with another damaged ring land there. So that's scrap. I looked at this one. Did look quite promising, but again, it's got an issue with the ring there. Rendering that one scrap. Which leaves this one. Um, it's not too bad on the sides, on the skirts. Measures across the skirt quite well. The ring lands don't look too bad, but this one did suffer corrosion. It's like a fucking moon surface across there. But we're building this for a bit of fun. It's not going in a vehicle. It's not going to be doing tens of thousands of miles. Um, we're just going to run it up on some av gas, make some flames and noise. Maybe test a few carburetors, etc. Uh, and if somebody wants to chuck it on a dyno for a giggle, why not? So next, I think what we'll do is I'll remove that piston. Um, give it a clean. And then get those two, uh, those two pistons removed off them rods. So we've got a set of rods and we've got a set of pistons. So the plant... It's 
to warm that enough so when it goes in the press it comes out without breaking the piston. I'll show you that one when it's cooled down a bit. It's a bit warm at the moment. Well, that's the four we're going to use. I need those two rods from those pistons. So I'll repeat that procedure again. And I'll probably chuck them back in the garage and see if over time they get better. So, with a set of pistons and a set of rings and some rods, we can get this lot together, we can get them in the block. I actually thought I'd struck gold the other night. I was looking in the uh, in the scrap pile and came across these, which they're not actually that bad. I thought, oh, I'll use those, and because I didn't have anything to compare them with at the time. Um, I brought them up to work here, up to the workshop, and here lieth the problem. There are actually 1600 uh, pistons and connecting rods. Probably explains why they're in better condition. But now it makes me wonder do I actually build up my 1600 bottom end at some point? Let me know in the comments. So, yeah. That is from the engine that we're using the cylinder head from, a 1972 1600 GT, which, yeah, they're not in bad condition. But, too small for this build, so, those ones it is. Well, we've chosen a set of pistons. We've got that one and this one. Now, this one measures quite well across the skirt. The ring lands are the shape they're meant to be, not like some of those which are deformed from detonation. But, yeah, I suffered corrosion on the top of this one. It, uh, it was all white and furry. But, needs must. Now, I have obviously had to. Uh, remove the old pistons which have sort of suffered with the detonation so those are the two rods and I wanted to use the rods from one engine because theoretically it should be a match set but look at the material on that one and compare it to that one that's a lot of difference and when you look at those two the actual amount of material isn't huge Pretty much like that one. Which makes me wonder if that's been replaced at some time. And is probably not matched for weight with the other three. So I think now what I shall do is... I'm going to put those two pistons in some thinners and just let them soak so we can get them as clean as possible. But I'm going to take those two home and just put them on the scales. Just have a quick, uh, quick check on the weights. Now... If that one's a lot heavier, I'm tempted to remove all the rods and actually balance them up end for end and match them across the board for weight. That's the plan and we've got plenty of other rods we can uh, throw into the equation, even though I did say that about pistons. And those four are dead. And those four are usable. Shame those other ones were 1600 pistons, but that's life. So, I think that wraps this one up, really. From this point on, things might get messy. The, uh, the two rods. I need to stand on there. Let me just... Six sixty. 
And that's the one that had the bigger amount on there. Six five seven. So that makes me question those two rods. Because if they're six five seven, that's the anchor in the room. And we really need to address that. So I think next I'll take off those two rods. And this little setup is basically so I can measure end weights, which we'll put them on there and Then we can measure the weight of the uh, the little end and then we'll use a different rod to measure the big end of the rod. And then we can balance them all uh, across the board. So with the other two pistons removed, we can measure all the rods. 660. Six sixty. Six five eight. Six five eight. Doesn't sound much. I don't know how accurate the scales are because I did have some slightly different figures showing a difference of three grams um, between the two we had off yesterday which was that one which comes in at six fifty nine now not very accurate scales these folks six fifty nine six fifty eight six fifty eight but we have plenty to choose from, so 659. All varying weights, I do need to measure end to end weights, um, but we've definitely got enough options to make up a matching set. But that also provides that the, uh, the actual circle to the big end is still a circle and not an egg shape. So, moving on. Um, great, we can do the rods. We can get those sorted out, but we have another problem. And it's a biggie. The two pistons were removed, which came off without any issue and any indication that there was any pain felt. Um, but I was having an inspection. And I don't know if it will show up on camera just there. It'll show. It'll focus in. Well, there's actually a crack. I don't think it'll show up on camera. It's not showing up on my phone. Whether it'll show up on the screen, I don't know. But there's a crack. So that piston is scrap. Meaning we're a piston short. And I don't think I have any more floating about, which does pose a problem. Uh, not sure what to do about this one, folks. I'm gonna have to have a little rethink. And I thought that was the worst piston. At least it doesn't have any cracks in it. But it doesn't measure up either. Now, would anybody interested in winning a piston? Might even chuck in a hat with it? Is that something people would be interested in? See if we could uh, raise a charity fund for some pistons. I don't know, let me know in the comments. So as you can see folks, we've hit a bit of a brick wall. The crack in the piston, um, pretty sure I haven't caused it when uh, removing the pistons from the connecting rods. I uh, have used heat and when it came out there was no, no indication it felt the pain. And I had noticed the, what looked to be a mark in that area. It is what it is folks. So, out of those four pistons only actually one is usable. This is all down to the detonation issues, which, yeah, speaking of which, that's one of them. Would you like to win this? I don't know. 
Would you like a signed piston from Blown 8 Cylinder? Maybe one day I'll be famous on YouTube and it'll be worth some money. Let me know in the comments. So, on that bombshell, catch you on the next one.